Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Jillian Berry and today we have a really amazing guest in store for you guys. We have Alicia and she is from the Raw Synergy YouTube channel. She is very well known online in the raw world. She has been mostly raw vegan for 13 years. She is fully raw vegan right now. And she also recently completed a 136 day juice cleanse. So we are going to talk all about this. And she has also been doing the celery juice trend for almost, I believe, two years now. So drinking celery juice every morning. We will find out how this has changed her life. If it has, clearly it has, if she's doing it for two years. And we're just <laughs> going to talk about so many amazing things. And she's really a sweet, amazing person. So you guys are really going to want to watch this one all the way through. It's going to be amazing. And let's say hello. Hey, Alicia, how's it going? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you on. So I can't wait to hear about the juice cleanse and everything. I would love to first start though with your raw journey. So I always love to find out just a little history so we can connect a little more. Um, so what led you to being raw vegan? Yes. So gosh, I had digestive issues my entire life and my, my body just for some reason, I don't know what I'm learning more now about what it was, um, but I just never felt well my entire life. I just never felt good. And so I was constantly searching for answers. And when I was 20, I started learning more about health and wellness and that you didn't have to go to the doctor all the time and you didn't have to take medication, that there were natural alternatives. And that really turned me on to just learning so much about health. And then uh, I eventually did this three-week cleanse that was supposed to help like digest your digestion. And it completely changed my life. And at that point, when I was bringing in just fruits and vegetables, my body started functioning perfectly. Like everything was working so well. And it was, I was doing all raw. And I just, overnight, I just went raw and that was it. I never looked back wow. until, until my mom got sick. And then I started adding in just a little bit of cooked food just to, because I, I just couldn't tolerate sweet fruits and uh, it was just really challenging. So I brought in some like sweet potatoes and potatoes and cooked vegetables at night. But other than that, it's, I've been mostly raw and all primarily all raw. And how did you feel when you added in the cooked food? Like, how did you feel having a little bit more cooked food versus being like back on fully raw now? Yeah, it was, it was really interesting because at the time that my mom got sick, um, life was just, my life was just turned upside down and I, the energy, it's so interesting because the energy of raw food, it, it brings you up so high. And when I brought in the cooked food, it really, I could feel like my body just became so dense. Like there was just this density feeling and I, it, it definitely had like more of a grounding effect, but it was like too heavy. A grounding effect is how I would describe it. And it just, it's something that does not make me feel my ultimate best. Like I really enjoy that light feeling, that high vibrational feeling. There's a, there's an energetic vibrational high that comes from eating raw food. And it just makes me feel so good. Mm -hmm. So when I had the cooked food, I just didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel vibrant. I didn't feel as alive or as energized. I felt okay. Like there's nothing wrong with it. You know, cooked food is fine. But for me, it just, I didn't feel as amazing as I do yeah. on raw food. That's the exact same scenario for me. That's why I do it. Cause it just makes me feel my best. Like so electric yes. alive. Like I, I feel like I'm not myself like uh, on the cooked food too, but I get it that some people maybe can still feel great on it, but not me. And I'm wondering like yeah. what major benefits mm -hmm. did you notice when you went raw? Like initially and how did it impact your life so many gosh oh the first thing that i noticed was how i'm really sensitive my like i'm really in tune with my body and the first thing that i noticed is that i just felt 
I felt this a sense of over, overall freedom throughout my whole body. It was just like, I just felt so light and so free. And there was just like this ease of motion mm-hmm. that came through my body and everything. My digestion started working better. My hormones were so balanced. Like my hormones used to be so out of whack for so long. Like ever since I first got a period when I was like 12 years old, that was like the worst thing that I could have ever experienced. It was so awful. And my hormones just completely balanced out. I was not over emotional or angry or moody or anything. It was just like, I was just so happy. Like nothing could hardly bother me at all. And my headaches went away. Like I had constant migraines and headaches all the time. Those went away. As far as like having a cycle, there was no more pain. Like it just was so easy, so light. Um, my teeth, like I went to the dentist, I used to get plaque on my teeth all the time, no matter how much I brushed or floss my teeth, I took the best care of my teeth. And every time I went to the dentist, they were like, you have so much plaque, you need to brush, you need to floss. I'm like, you don't understand, I'm doing that. And when it's like within the first six months of going raw, I went to the dentist and had my first like checkup after being raw. And they're like, wow, your teeth look amazing. Like there was literally no plaque. And from that point on, I've had like, when I sit down in the dentist chair, it's like I'm in and out in 20 minutes because there's mm-hmm. nothing clean. Amazing. Which I thought, yeah, that was like such an eye opener to me, like how much diet affects your teeth. And um, yeah, I had so many dental problems before being raw, like in my life, my history in my life. But I might, I have the same thing. Like my teeth feel so clean, raw. Every time I go to the dentist, yes. there's no cavities. Um, I think people run into dental problems on the raw diet if they're eating a lot of like uh, dried fruits, like a lot of dates. Right. Or like, you know, stuff like that. That's from, from interviewing a lot of people. That's what I've seen. And that's what I noticed for myself. If I was eating like a lot of dates, you might feel some sensitivity. Then you stop, it goes away. And like, they're totally fine. Right. But yeah, sorry totally. to interrupt. before we get into all the juicing stuff, were there any other changes you want to? Yeah. Well, um, I just, I had really bad skin. My skin was really bad and, um, that has cleared up. My skin is so much better. I get so many compliments on my mm-hmm. skin now, which is absolutely amazing because my whole life I had up until the point that I went raw, my skin was just awful. It was embarrassing. I cried so many times over my skin. It was just miserable. And that was one thing that eventually after I did a water fast, my skin really cleared up. Wow. Wow. Yeah. How long did you do for a water fast? I've never done a water fast. Yeah, I did 13. 13, 13 days. It was supervised oh. with Dr. Graham. Yeah. Wow. I just yeah. interviewed him. By the time this is up, that interview will be on the channel. We talked about oh, the eight, times. Yeah. So how was that experience? It was intense. It was an amazing experience. It was really intense. It was very hard for me because, um, I really, I, I don't have any problem with like the not eating part. Like that was pretty easy for me. I don't really have like food addictions or mm-hmm. um, anything like that. But my body, I think my, I just had, I have had so many toxins and so much stuff in my body that has needed to come out. And, um, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about my juice cleanse, but um, it was really challenging. Like I felt I felt really sick and nauseated pretty much the whole 13 days. It was really challenging. I bet it must be so challenging. I don't know if I could do it. Maybe one day when my kids are older, I'd want to try it, but I think it's important to do it supervised too. I think people have to be careful with like water fast or dry fast. Yes, Juice fasting is totally different. I think you should feast, have like an abundance of juices and calories. Like when I did 37 days, I felt like so energized, but water fasting must just be like a whole other level. It's so it's so crazy. It's did so you different. ever feel yeah. like worried at any point? Like something might ha- bad might happen or like, no, during that time. No, I don't think so. I just, it was really frustrating that the symptoms weren't letting up. Yeah. You know, it was just like constant. My body was really aching and I got, I got so weak. Like I got to the point where I could barely walk. Like at one point I had to be carried into his like 
yeah. uh, room where he did lectures and stuff. So it was, it was just really challenging. Wow. And then, so were you happy to break that fast? Were you happy to end the <laughs> water fast? What, how, what did you yeah, break it I, w- I was really happy to break it. It was, an, that part was like, that was like such a highlight, breaking your water fast. And he ha- he he provides like the most amazing fruit for you. And we broke it on watermelon. And it was like, it was the greatest experience to take that first bite of watermelon. Like, yeah, I, you just, you get so giddy and so giggly because you're so excited to finally like have some food. And it's just, that moment is just the height of the whole experience. And when people go there, like, do they decide going in? Okay. This is the plan for you. We're going to do 10 days or do they, do you, do you just like wing it and see how you feel and then break it like day by day type of thing? Well, with that one, because it's, you have only a limited period there because he has so many events going on at that time. And he has to have like only so much time. So that's the reason why uh, I was only able to do two weeks. I probably would have done longer if, Hmm. if that could have been a possibility. So, um, but yes, when you go in, like usually like in his Costa Rica events, you just, you basically go until he feels that you're at the point where you should stop. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So you've done that. And then you also, before we get into juicing, we will very shortly, you also have been doing the celery juice trend for two years, right? So what exactly is that for anybody who doesn't know? And what kind of results have you had there? Yes. So the celery juice thing, I started doing it because I was still having some digestive issues going on, especially from incorporating the cooked foods. I was Mm -hmm. experiencing digestive stuff. And the celery juice is supposed to really go in and help your digestive tract heal. It's like, it's like Mm -hmm. a medicinal herb celery. And especially when you take it in the quantities, that you take it when you're drinking the celery juice, it's very concentrated. And uh, it's so it has supposed to really go in and help heal your whole digestive tract. And I and so I decided to try it because everybody was talking about it. And it's interesting because I did try it before. And I only gave it like a week. And I felt ah, it didn't really do anything for me. Mm-hmm. But I felt really drawn to do it again. And when I did it again, I really didn't notice any difference until after about two weeks. So if somebody does try it, they really need to give it some time. And then after about a month, I really started noticing that my digestion was much stronger. I had a stronger sense of hunger. Things were eliminating better. Uh, It felt like my stomach acid was like more in the proper balance was not having like GERD issues, like acid Mm -hmm. reflux and things. And so um, that was probably one of the biggest things that I noticed. But over time, like over the last two years, I've also noticed a change in my hair. So I noticed that um, my hair started having like lots of uh, like breaking off a lot. Like Mm. I would see as you kind of look and the light would kind of catch your hair, I would see like all these broken off parts. But now where it's all grown in over the last couple of years, it's much more smooth. Like this, the hair strands look smoother. So I feel like it's helped my hair as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you supplement or no? I do supplement. Yes. Yeah. I, I have a, a, a variety of supplements that I take. And especially now since Uh, I've kind of discovered that over the last, I would say the last year and a half, two years, that I have histamine intolerance. And most likely based on taking like online surveys and just looking at um, symptom symptoms Mm -hmm. online, I'm I'm like 99% sure I have something called mast cell activation syndrome. And that's something that I believe that I've had my whole life. And that's something that's really affected me. And when I first went raw, I feel like my body did so much healing and it kind of flipped that switch off a bit uh, because I just was doing so much better. But then with the stress of losing my mom and going through that whole um, period of my life that was just so, so stressful, I feel like the switch kind of came back on and like all those symptoms came 
rushing back in. So mm-hmm. I'm taking a lot of symptoms to try to help that. Stress can do a so lot much. Of, yeah, supplements. Yeah. I feel like stress can do so much on us. And then you start eating different things you would need and then not everything. Yeah. Yeah, well, it just goes let, downhill. yeah, let's talk about the juice cleanse. So 136 days you recently completed. Yes. What drew you to do this? Did you decide at the beginning you were going to do some like such a long cleanse or was it just no. you felt felt so good? You kept going. What's the story? Yeah. So the story is that um, about three days, be- three or four days before I started it, I had something really mild for dinner, like mashed potatoes. And as had been happening with the cooked food at night, stuff just wasn't digesting right. And I was having to sleep sitting up. It was not fun because the acid reflux is not good. Just like things weren't moving through me. And it was just so frustrating. And I just kept asking the universe. I'm like, universe, show me the way, please give me the answers. I need guidance here. I need answers. I need solutions. I need to know what to do. I need a sign. Give me something. And about three days later, I had a conversation with my very good friend, John Bordanero, who you just interviewed Mm -hmm. on your channel. And we were catching up over Skype and he was telling me that he was on a juice cleanse and he was 30 days in and saying how great he felt and how amazing he was doing drinking these juices. And he was like, Alicia, you, you know, I just can't explain how amazing this is. You've just got to try it. And so at that point, I was like, this feels like absolutely divine timing. This is perfect. And so that very night after talking to him, I had juice for dinner. And the next day, that was it. I just started juicing. And I basically said, I'm going to do this until I am completely better Mm -hmm. or until my body tells me it's had enough. Wow. And that's what I did. I just, every single day, it was just another day of juicing. Like it was just, I was just moving forward with it. Was it hard? Was this a really challenging thing to do? Did you drink a lot of juice or were you limiting your juice? I was not limiting it at all. I basically just, I always listen to my body. It's just always a matter of tuning in and following what feels right to me. And so I was drinking about four to five liters of juice every single day. It was like, um, you know, at least a gallon or a little more than a gallon every day. And if I was more active, it was definitely, um, even more, like I might do six liters, but I really kept the juices flowing as much as possible. For me, it was very easy. Um, Most people would probably look at what I was doing though and say, I could not do that because of the histamine intolerance. My only fruit that I could really juice was apples. So my whole juice cleanse was primarily apple. And sorry, what is histamine intolerance for anybody who doesn't know? Yeah. So histamine intolerance, basically, um, our body constantly has histamine, uh, running through it. We're, our body is constantly producing histamine. Like every time, um, we get a cut or a scrape, like, uh, our body produces histamine. It's kind of like part of the body's healing process, but for some people, the histamine can kind of get out of control and the body can't uh, break it down as fast as like the average person. And so the way it kind of gets described is that you have this, basically this bucket that uh, fills up and most people, their bucket gets only a certain uh, part of the way full and then it naturally can empty itself. But with people who have histamine intolerance, the bucket of histamine fills up and then overflows. If you um, work out too hard, if you have too much stress, if you eat, there's so many foods that are really high in histamine Mm -hmm. or they're histamine liberators, which means when they go in, they, they increase your um, body's own histamine. Mm -hmm. So it releases, it helps to release histamine in your body. And so your bucket gets really full and overflowing. And when that happens, all these crazy symptoms start happening. Like for me, I get intense migraines, like 
really serious migraines for like 24 hours. It pulls my whole spinal alignment out Mm -hmm. of alignment. And I get really, really bad neck and shoulder pain. Um, Just, it's, it's really horrible. Like it feel, I literally feel like I've been beat up or hit by a truck or something like um, for 24 hours. And it is absolutely awful. So My thing right now is just absolutely avoiding any histamine foods in order to keep that inflammation down from my body. So I don't have that. So for me, uh, my, my diet is mainly focused on, um, especially during the juice cleanse, it was all like mostly apple juice. So I would do the celery juice in the morning. I would do apple ginger throughout the day. And then I would have probably another green juice and then more apple ginger uh, to make up for it. So that Mm -hmm. was mainly my, my juices. And so most people would look at that and go, oh my God, that's so awful. That's boring. I could never do that. But, you know, most people, if you don't have a histamine issue, you can juice pretty much everything. I mean, you're the, the, options are almost unlimited. Mm-hmm. And so it, it makes it so much easier and so much better. And so what's challenging. Like, is that yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's just, it was just challenging for me because I didn't have that variety. And sometimes mm-hmm. I was getting bored and every once in a while I would like juice a cherimoya because that would work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't very often. So And did you feel like you achieved like your goals and you did like you did experience some improved health from doing the juice cleanse? Oh yeah. So much. So before doing the juice cleanse for about a year, I was breaking out in these horrible, horrible rashes, uh, all over my upper body from multiple chemical sense sensitivity. So Mm -hmm. all of a sudden I just developed this multiple chemical sensitivity and I basically could not leave the house at at one point because it seemed that everywhere I went, uh, I was being affected by something in in a grocery store, in Costco, in um, if I hugged somebody, I know my husband was having his clothes dry cleaned and it was, and it's like an eco dry cleaner, but still he would wear the shirts and it had like the slightest bit of fragrance. And he would wear that and my throat would start to just break out with all these sores and just get really inflamed. And my skin would just get so itchy and rashy. And that was really challenging. So that was another reason why I really needed to make a change because I couldn't live like that anymore. Like I was at the point where I literally could not leave the house unless mm-hmm. I was going to like deal with these awful rashes. And so, what do you think ca- was causing all this? Like why do you my, think these sensitivities started getting triggered like this? My theory is that so many toxins built up in my system. Um, there's a long story behind that. And part of that is that... Um, And I know there's a lot of people who don't believe in the toxin theory, and I will explain Mm -hmm. to you why I also believe that there is something to that. But my mom was a hairstylist and she, for 60 years, worked in a hair salon. She owned her own salon and she was constantly immersed in hair chemicals because she was doing hair five, six days a week. And she was always doing colors and permanence and just the shampoos and all those things. Like she was just immersed in that. And so for 10 years um, before she had me, she, she had all those chemicals running through her body. And then I believe that when I was in her room, I was being affected by all of those chemicals that she was ingesting. And of course, just like, Mm -hmm. because I'm naturally more sensitive, all the chemicals that are in our cleaning products and in our personal care and just everywhere that the flooring that, that I grew up in, um, the, like the vinyl flooring, it's still off gassing today. Like it's so those Mm. floors are so toxic. And I lived in a house with lead paint. Like there's just so many things that I was exposed to as a child that I believe just being sensitive, I was more affected by all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
so I really believe that there was just that my body was just harboring those things. But then also, on the other hand, I'm learning so much about the limbic system and the, um, the connection with stress, uh, the stress hormones and going through stressful experiences and the body mm-hmm. also creates um, stress responses. So that's another thing that's really a big deal. And I was not dealing with stress well. I, I've never dealt with stress well until now. Like I'm definitely getting the stress under control now. But so that's a big part of those, those two sides, I believe, are why I was breaking out so badly and why I've just always had so many issues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I'm just wondering with lowering stress, because it feels like this has been a part of your life, like dealing with stress and learning how to lower it and navigate it. Do you have any tips for like any of us to anything that's worked for you for lowering stress levels and feeling better? Yes. uh, So many. Well, one of the biggest things that I, I would say the biggest thing that has helped me is Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. I don't know if you're familiar with Mm him. I am. Yeah. But I have immersed myself in his teachings, in his work. I've been to two of his week-long advanced retreats, and I cannot recommend his work highly enough. I actually, during my juice cleanse, went to a week-long back in April. I took my juicer with me and I was immersed in, in all of that. And so meditation, like his thing is meditation. His thing is, um, really paying attention to the thoughts that you think every day. And basically you can't live your life the same way every single day, expecting your life to change. We have to look at what we're doing, look at what we're thinking, look at how we're acting, look at how we're judging other people and decide that if this is not the life that we want to lead, we actually have to make changes. We have to do things differently. And so that was a big thing for me. I really had to start looking at what I was thinking. And I had loops running in my head of all different kinds of things um, from just like thinking that I can't heal, that it's just, that it's just never going to happen, that I'm never going to feel well, that um, that just, there was just so many different things that I had to catch myself, stop myself from thinking those thoughts and then put in new thoughts, n- new ways of thinking, new ideas. How do I want my life to look? How do I want it to be? How do I want to live? So that, that was a really, really key. And also for me, it's just like listening to that stuff every single day. Like if I'm not listening to Dr. Joe, I'm listening to Abraham Hicks. I'm mm-hmm. listening to Louise Hay. I'm listening to um, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, all these people who are talking about positive, uplifting things. I'm watching videos and things that are uplifting. I got rid of... Uh, Netflix. I don't watch TV anymore. Like everything that I do, I'm immersing myself in positive, happy, good stuff so that I, I'm immersed in that. And that's what I want my life to be. That's what I want my life to look like. And that's how I want to feel is happy and high vibe. Yeah. Then you will definitely experience that. I feel like in your outer world, all these positive changes, you know, when you're focusing deliberately on doing that, I did that recently in the month of May, I left all social media for 30 days because things had just gotten in a funk and a little bit negative. And I made a deliberate point to focus on like all things positive, you know, like positive lyrics, even when I was working out or like positive people, if I was going to consume anything, uh, it would be like positive TV or like whatever I was watching. And it was just the most life transforming month ever. It was just, I, you know, I attracted more prosperity, more. It was just the most peaceful, amazing time ever. So I feel like you're like definitely on that journey too. I think it's amazing. You went to see Joe Dispenza and I'm wondering, did you have any other spiritual? I know like when I have cleansed in the past, there's been lots of like spiritual moments. So did you find the juice cleanse was a spiritual experience? And were there any other like things you were drawn to besides Joe Dispenza or any life-changing books or like any um, interesting moments that happened with regards to spirituality? Oh gosh. Yeah. I've had, well, my, 
my first week long event that I went to with him, I totally had a crazy mystical experience. Like he talks about um, where the, the energy just takes over your body. And I had that experience where it just took over my body. And I was in absolute bliss, ecstasy for hours. And after that, it lasted for weeks and weeks. And it was just it was so powerful and so intense. It was just absolutely amazing. And then this time I was, I don't know if it's because I was expecting more for, um, for it to be like a more powerful experience, but because being on juice, I thought, oh my gosh, being on juice, it's going to be like even more amazing than last time. And I think maybe I was like, um, maybe had too high of an expectation or was putting too much into it. But um, I didn't have the crazy, amazing mystical experience mm-hmm. this time. But I definitely, um, I definitely still had the energy moving through me. And and as far as like books that I've read that have been life changing, I've read so many. Um, I think some of my top three would be. Um, the Breakthrough Experience by Dr. John Demartini. That was one that just um, really, maybe not so much spiritual, but that book really changed how I, how I viewed other people and their experiences and how I could relate to people and, and really just not take things personally. That book was mm. just like such a game changer for me. Um, the Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer was absolutely an amazing book that absolutely changed my life. Uh, and what was the, oh, the third one was um, by Julia Cameron, The Artist's Way. Even though that one's not like totally a spiritual, spiritual book, I recommend that book to everybody because that one is also a total game changer when it comes to just finding your purpose and finding uh, more joy in life and just really finding who you are. It's such a beautiful book. And I just, all three of those books are absolutely amazing, but there's so many, like I could just probably go on and on. Yeah. Amazing. I think purpose is like really everything. It's so important. It can just totally yes. change our lives. And with the juice class, I'm cleanse. I'm wondering, I don't think he asked you, what did you break it with? And then, so you've been back on fully raw since breaking it. Yes. So I broke it with a cherimoya because, you know, John, like I really followed a lot of what John Rose talks about in his videos. And, um, he re- really recommends to break your, your juice cleanse with prunes, but, uh, any dried or dehydrated fruits are incredibly high in histamine. Mm-hmm. And even if you reconstitute them with water, which is what he recommends for breaking, um, it's still going to be really high in histamine. So I didn't want to do that to my body and cherimoya is such a good fruit for me that I broke it on cherimoya and it was, it was great. Yeah. That's great. Good. I'm glad. And then you've been fully raw since then. And have you felt good since then? Like, do you feel a difference now that you're back on raw versus the cooks and like, you feel really good or do you feel like you're still struggling with some things with your health? Yeah. So, well, the first thing that I noticed was the multiple chemical sensitivity is completely gone. Mm. I don't have it anymore. I can go to any store. I can touch all kinds of fabrics. My husband is back to the wearing his dry clean clothes. And there's like literally no response at all from my body. Like it's just gone. So that was really amazing for me to be able to now leave the house and like live my life like a normal person. So, so grateful for that. Uh, One of the things that was this juice cleanse was also really challenging for me. So it wasn't as challenging as the water fast was Uh, but I went through so many detox symptoms throughout the entire juice cleanse, not quite. Well, there were periods where it was just as intense as the water fast for me. Mm -hmm. And so much of the time that I spent was, um, just really dealing with a lot of detox system, s- symptoms. I had so much pain, like lots and lots of pain. 
uh, aches and pains in my back, my shoulders, my neck, my hips, my thighs. Um, and then it was around, around day 90, I started really like draining a lot of mucus and stuff. Like some people's, it's so interesting to me to watch, like, for example, John's juice cleanse, he was like, so high vibe the whole time. He was feeling amazing, had hardly any detox symptoms at Mm -hmm. all. We were texting back and forth and he was always like, Oh my gosh, it just keeps getting better and better. It's so amazing. And I and I think he's I'm, still on it, right? I'll link that down below for anybody wondering. Yes. I interviewed him on day 200. I think now he's on like day 220 or I don't even know, but he's, yeah. yeah. yeah so you, that wasn't exactly your experience. Not my experience at all. My experience was absolutely the complete opposite from him. So, and that's one thing that I want to share because I know some people, when they're going through their juice cleanse, mm-hmm. they come up against all these um, issues. And if, if by t- week two, they're not feeling amazing, they just break it thinking that it's not doing anything. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what I really want to share is like, I was on this juice cleanse for 136 days and I pretty much did not feel good most of the time I was on the juice cleanse. Like I didn't have those, I really didn't have those days where I was just like euphoric and in bliss, which is what I would have fully expected for myself. Like that's what I was expecting. Like I was thinking every time he would text me and say, Oh my God, it's like so amazing. It's just getting better and better. I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, any day now for me, that's going to happen. And it really almost pretty much never happened. Like I had glimpses of it every wow. once in a while, like maybe a handful of times, but yeah, otherwise I just, I was just going through so many ups and downs of symptoms and crazy things. And then by, I think it was like around day 90, I started having some detox symptoms. I started breaking out with an eye sty. So I decided, yeah. um, I, I've often had issues with eye styes in the past. And I think part of that well, I don't, I'm not really actually not really sure what causes that if it's stress or what, but um, usually they stay around a really long time. Like they'll be around for a month or longer. And, and if I don't resolve them pretty quickly, they just get out of control. They get really big and obnoxious and they're so painful. So mm-hmm. when I'm on the juice cleanse, like I'm already doing something so healing for my body and I get this I sigh, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is like, this is going to be really painful and awful. So I decided to dry fat, which, you know, obviously I definitely don't recommend that unless you're like, you've done it. You know, if you're really in tune with your body, you've cleansed a lot. Like I, I don't recommend that, but for me, I knew it was the right thing in that moment. And I decided to do a dry fast and I ended up dry fasting. I just kept going because I was I felt totally fine doing it. I think I was so hydrated from all the juices. I kept doing it. So I did a 33 hour dry fast. Wow. And, um, my eyesight went away. Like it was gone within like three days, which was absolutely amazing. I was so grateful that that was gone. Yeah. Um, but then the very next day after breaking the dry fast, I started getting all these symptoms. Like it just, it like woke the beast inside my body. So all of a sudden now I'm like, my body was like, okay, you, you want to do this? We're doing this. And all of a sudden I just, I had like, I I was experiencing symptoms of like strep throat. My eyes were um, releasing mucus. Mucus was coming out of my head. Um, I got the full on body aches, was feeling horrible. Like it just, was like awful. And then that went away within like a week. Like I felt so much better. And then around day 120, just before the end of, towards the end of my juice cleanse, uh, I kind of was sensing that I was coming to an end and I really wanted to do this lymphatic therapy that my colon hydrotherapist, uh, offers. And it's basically, um, it's like these two little electrodes. They look like, uh, light, they look like old fashioned light bulbs. And she just runs them over your whole body really gently. It's like, a, it's supposed to be like this really gentle process and you can kind of feel it wherever it gets stuck. 
like as it's rubbing against your body, it um, kind of like rubs over the skin kind of hard. Like you can just tell where you have like a lot of lymphatic stagnation going on. And I told her, I'm like, just do it all over my body. Focus on my head because I know I've got a lot of like stagnant lymph in my head still because my vision is blurry. And um, I really wanted to do that. So I did that and followed that with a uh, with a colon hydrotherapy right after. And on the third day after doing that, I, my body just went through a whole nother crazy release of stuff. And the mucus started pouring out again. And I ended up like, it was Friday night. And all of a sudden I felt like flu symptoms coming over my body. And I went straight to bed. I just climbed under the covers and I was like, oh my God, that, you know, like part of me was like, not again, but part of me was like, thank God, all of this stuff is coming out. Like mm-hmm. let it rip body, just let it rip. And so after that, I was releasing so much mucus everywhere. Oh. Like it was coming out of me like crazy. And I had just I was, I was so, I was in so much pain and discomfort on, over that whole weekend. I literally could not get out of bed. I, I had, my husband had to like roll me around on the office chair to get back and forth from the bed to the bathroom. And I didn't even go in the kitchen for like three days because I just couldn't move my body. Wow. All that stuff was moving through me. And now it- that I look, yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. Was any of it mucoid plaque or did you, have you, did you release any mucoid plaque on it? Or do you believe in mucoid plaque? I definitely believe that it's a possibility. I personally didn't release any of like the big, long Mm -hmm. ropey strands of that, but I did see stuff that looked like it, um, like it could have been parts of that. Like there was just like rubbery looking dark stuff that came out that I was like, Hmm, that's like not normal. Um, and yeah, like just the mucus that came out, it was just, it was clear, clearly mucus. Like it was, when you looked at it, you could see it was mucus. And then there were other things that didn't look like mucus, but then on closer examination, I'm like, oh my God, that's mucus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was really intense, really crazy. Part of me was like, maybe this was like a little too much for my body to like Mm -hmm. a little too overwhelming. Maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I'm glad that I did it. Like I, I feel so, so much better now, like on the other side. So actually this is another thing that I wanted to mention that, um, I kind of stopped supplementing during the juice cleanse about 30 days in, I thought, well, maybe I should stop supplementing because that was kind of recommended by some people who are a little bit more advanced in the juicing arena. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'll try not supplementing. And I cut out everything except for like some vitamin C. And I really started, I, I, I noticed that I kind of like didn't feel as well. Like I noticed I started to feel depressed. Like I really started to get some deep depression towards the end of the juice cleanse and wow. breaking the juice cleanse. I think it was like the first, second and third days after breaking the juice cleanse, I was so depressed. I felt so not like myself. And I thought there's something so wrong. Like I'm really missing something. And I just yeah. said to the universe again, I'm like, universe, I need some answers. Give me a solution. Tell me what to do. And I just had this realization that I hadn't taken iodine in quite a while. And I just felt like I I must be really low. So I started taking the iodine again and taking the supplements that help it absorb and help it um, to really get into your, your body. And like literally the next day, I felt like a new person. It was so crazy. And I have felt so much better ever since. Like every day just gets better and better. So it was like my, yeah. my juice cleanse was like so backward compared to like what most people go through. And so I just want to say like, you can go the whole juice cleanse, not feeling well, but then after you break it and you get back to like eating and, and supplementing, 
you can feel so much better. But I think my, my experience was so different from what most people will, will experience. I think most people will have an amazing experience like John did on, on their juice mm-hmm. cleanse. I think that they will feel so much better mm-hmm. by doing that. And I just, I know my body, like I'm so in tune with my body. I know what makes me uh, feel good and what doesn't. And I just, I'm really good at following my intuition and my inner guidance. And I just, I just do what I feel led to do. And I feel like it was the right thing for me. Yeah. Well, that's good. Then that's all that matters, you know, doing what's right for you. Yeah. My experience was more like John's when I did 37 days. I I still say I did. It was the best 37 days of my life. Like I felt incredible. And I think that's also, well, for my case, I found I had to drink a lot. Like if I wasn't drinking a lot, then maybe I'd feel more tired or not good, but I was drinking a lot of juice. Like I'm talking like a lot. But yeah. everybody's experience is different, even if they're drinking a lot. Like I get it. But also what you're saying about iodine, I think it's so important. I think it's so underrated in like the vegan community. People sometimes I'll bring it up and they'll be like, what's that? Sounds like a weird thing. Like it's, but it's so mm. important to think of these things, right? I just had all my blood work done or all my blood work checked. And we checked my thyroid and like the iodine levels all, like connected with that. And everything was perfect. So like I take an all in one and it has iodine and iodine is something you want to be careful. You don't get too much of too. Same with selenium. So like I take right. those zinc, magnesium in the, in the all in one B12, D, K, DHA, EPA. So like all these things are so important. And I feel like just one thing being off can really throw us off. And, I, and I think no matter what your diet, because I have a close friend, she eats everything, she eats meat and she just got, she's like literally losing so much hair and she just got <sighs> diagnosed like crazy low in like iron and D. And so I think like, no matter what your diet, get your blood work checked and see, like, we're so blessed. We live in a world where we can check those things and see like, is there something missing? Do I need to top it up? And then, like you said, you felt so different. So like, have you checked any of your blood work through all this? Do you check your blood work or, or no? Yes. I've always been one to check it every, usually try to do it every year. And I definitely have checked mine. Um, and the interesting thing with the iodine is um, it's really tricky. This is something that I learned from Don Bennett because he is s- such a valuable, knowledgeable person in this arena. Uh, and he talks about how because your bodies, our bodies have a lot of like uh, fluoride, bromine and things inside, it can actually block your, your readings from coming up accurately. Mm. And so the way that you truly test your iodine, you have to do a 24 hour urine test where you collect your urine for 24 hours. And then that gives you a better reading. But even with that, like the first time I did that, you can still get false readings because you're the I'm not the best at explaining it. He's really good at explaining it, obviously, but it just, Mm -hmm. it's these things that are in your body, like the, the fluoride and the bromine and um, different halides, they really block you from getting a proper reading until you start pushing those things out. So that, and that's one thing that the iodine does. And that's why over supplementing on iodine becomes a problem because of the detox symptoms of those, uh, particular elements running through your body can really cause some pain and discomfort. It's not so much that it's, I don't know that it's so much that it's like really dangerous, but it's just, it's really tricky to navigate. And so when supplementing with iodine, it's so important to have somebody's guidance like Don's guidance through yeah. something like that. Cause yeah, really, you uh, want to be careful with supplementing with iodine, yeah. same with selenium. And I know a great, uh, I consume, uh, kelp noodles sometimes in my salads. I don't know if you do too. Those are a good source of Mm -hmm. iodine. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering, so you've done a lot, like you've done the raw vegan, then you've gone to cook vegan, then you've done the celery juice, the juice cleanse, the water fast. What would you say comes to your mind when you feel your absolute best? I would say they all played such an important role in my journey and Uh, for me, it's like, I just recommend what people feel called to do. Like for me, ultimately the raw food diet, the high, for me, it's high fruit. The high fruit diet is what makes me feel my absolute best. Uh, and it's really about going with what you feel called to do, like really tuning in, asking like, 
I ask the universe all the time. I'm like, God, universe, show me the way, give me answers, show me signs, solutions, and then being open to the the information that comes in, the signs, the signals, the people you talk to, the things that you hear about, um, the videos that pop up in your feed and what you feel really drawn to. Like I always say, if you feel really drawn to something and it just makes your heart feel really open, for me, that is, that is a yes signal. And if you look at something and you feel really closed off to it and you're, you just instantly have this like closed off feeling or this um, just like a, a funky vibe about something, to me, that's an automatic no or not at this time kind of thing. So it's like, if you listen to those signals, you can really get an, a feel for what, what your body is needing in that moment. And so for me, it's always been about experimenting and trying different things, because how do you know if you don't try different stuff and see what really truly works for you? Because our bodies are going through different things at different times. We have different things affecting us. We all live in different environments. And what, what you and I need at this time is going to be different from what other people need in, in this moment. So it's mm-hmm. so important to tune into that. Yeah. And I'm wondering over all the years, like the 13 years raw and vegan, did you ever have animal products at all or no, or it's been like 13 years? No, I have oh. 13 years of absolutely no animal products that I know of. I mean, I'm sure there's a bug in my food once in a while because Mm -hmm. I eat mostly organic and I garden and all of that. So, but yeah, no intentional trying of animal products. It just, once I started following this lifestyle, I just knew it was for me. And no Mm -hmm. matter what happened, like, even though I've had all these health challenges and stuff Mm -hmm. going on and watching like so many people that I was following before, like going off the vegan diet and watching them do what they do. It's like, I just could never do that. Like some, there were certainly times where I thought, do I need to do that? You Mm -hmm. know, is there Mm -hmm. something to that? But I never did it because I just couldn't, I could never see myself doing that. Just, it's just not for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of my friends left, one of my very close friends left veganism um, last week, Mm. but he's not necessarily just, he's not having a lot of health problems. It's more so just a social thing and his new job. Mm. And I mean, feeling like a disconnection, but I mean, I don't judge him for it. I think that like, I'm just like shocked the amount of hate he's received. He had to go Mm -hmm. offline and like the messages you're this, you're that, like, I'm just like, Whoa. And then people are trying to act like he's hateful, which I totally understand people and the animals and everything like that. Like, especially I've developed such a huge compassion going raw. But then it's like, that's not the answer. You're acting like, you know, he's being so hateful yet. I don't know. Anyway, everybody has to do, everybody's on their own path. And at some points, maybe people are having animal products. I did the blood type O diet at one point in time. And I mean, I, you know, everybody is just on their own path. And I think we have to respect that and learn to love more and things like that. Yeah, I know. And this diet is so much about compassion. And it always amazes me. When mm-hmm. somebody goes away from veganism, that yeah. a community that is supposed to be so loving and compassionate mm-hmm. becomes not loving and compassionate, not understanding yeah. when they become judgmental. And that's the thing. It's like we have to look at ourselves like, why? Why would we become judgmental? What is it in us that is making us do that? We have to look at ourselves and, and ask ourselves, why can't we? love this person because maybe they need to go one more time Mm -hmm. to eating animals so that then they can see the difference and go, yeah, maybe Mm -hmm. this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. And then they lock into veganism a hundred percent. Like we Mm -hmm. just never know what's going to happen. So if we just send them love and, you know, let them do their thing, it's their journey. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it always amazes me that that happens. Yeah, me too, really. I hope it changes. But I mean, I don't know. And I'm wondering, people might wonder, did you lose a lot of weight on the 136 day juice cleanse? I got down to, I would say, I think I lost 13 pounds at my lowest, which Mm -hmm. I was already, I'm already at what I felt was like my lowest weight of where I, I wanted to be. 
And then I lost another 13 pounds. But I also really believe a lot of that was waste that needed to go Mm -hmm. because I really so much. And that was another thing that I wanted to mention. So coming back around to the whole chemical toxicity thing, I haven't talked about this on my channel yet, but during my, my, my first colonic of the juice cleanse, it was about a little over 30 days in. I had the colonic and as soon as I was done with that colonic and I went to the bathroom to release everything, it was so crazy. I released what smelled like permanent solution, you know, like perms that a, mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. We, wow. we would get. My, because my mom was a hairstylist, there were a number of times over my childhood. And um, I think the last time I had a perm, I think the last time that she did that for me was when I was 15 years old. Mm. And I'm telling you, there's nothing else that smells like a permanent. So I knew when that came out of me, I'm like, that is permanent solution. I just released, per- I was like mind blown, just absolutely mind blown. Wow. That had been in me for, what is that, like 35 years or more, more than 35 years that that stuff had been stuck in me, what wreaking whatever havoc it was doing. I mean, who knows what? So to me, it's like people say, no, your body doesn't store toxin, but that was like a surefire sign that yes, that that was stored in me that whole time. And do you, that's crazy. That's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's unreal. And do you, I feel like we can carry a lot of emotional stuff with that stuff too. That's why oh, cleansing totally. can be so emotional. Yes. That's, that's why at moments, not so much on my juice cleanse, I don't think, but when I did a 21 day watermelon cleanse last year and I did, uh, I forget how long on grapes at one point too. And it was just like the grape cleanse was the most emotional detox of my life, but also the deepest detox I felt ever out of everything was the grape cleanse out of the juice cleanse, the watermelon cleanse. I mean, yeah. I haven't done a cleanse in a while. I don't really know. I just eat a lot of food, <laughs> maybe too much food some days, but the grape cleanse was just this next level cleanse. Like I've never, cause I read the grape cure the book where she yeah. healed herself and many others. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. Cause it's easy. It's cheap. It's yes. easy. It's like, I, I'm busy with my kids. It's just like, it was the deepest cleanse of my entire life. Like the, the cleansing. Cause I guess they say that grapes like look like your lungs and they're really good for your lungs. Right. Yeah. That was what I noticed first a few days in, like how clear I felt through my sinuses in here. And I used to have asthma as a kid, like, you know, and when back when, I mean, it was the eighties, they were smoking in the house and it was just bad food. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like it's such a good cleanse, maybe for somebody who was quitting, who used to be a smoker around smoke or like the long, just the let that was just a next level. I can't even explain it. It was crazy. I did a grape juice cleanse and it was really intense. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that. I, this, I was just eating them. Sometimes I juice, but yeah. And I, did I ask you about the colonics and enemas? I was going to ask you, I don't think I did. So you said you did some colonics. So Mm -hmm. how many did you find you did on the juice cleanse and are colonics something you've done long-term and enemas? I've not done them long-term. I've definitely done them before in the past, especially like, uh, before I went raw because my entire life I was constipated. And, uh, that was something that every once in a while, I just felt that I needed to do that. It wasn't a lot. I would say maybe. I don't know, maybe 10 times over the course of my life Mm -hmm. before the juice cleanse. Over the course of the juice cleanse, I did a total of four. It was like approximately maybe one a month. Mm -hmm. Um, And I didn't do any enemas at all during the cleanse. But the the colonics, I felt they really, one thing that I noticed, they really helped just release more stuff. It's like getting that extra hydration on that other end. Like you have all this hydration going in this way to get that extra hydration going up in. There's something about that. It just, 
really helps to loosen up so much more and help your body lose more. Like I just noticed so much more stuff releasing during that time. Yeah. I haven't done one in a while. I used to do them more regularly and I love them, but then I was like, you know what? I've interviewed a lot of people have talked about the gut microbiome and people have colon problems. And I'm like, you know what? I think maybe they're good for, and this is just my opinion at this point in time. I think maybe they're good for cleanses and when you're on Mm -hmm. a cleanse, but not for like, I don't know my thoughts anymore on doing them like regularly, like long-term to do them like often for the microbiome. I think it just messes with it. But I do think during a cleanse, it can be a great tool, like a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It was really helpful too, with the detox symptoms as well. Like that was kind of like my motivation behind doing it was one of my detox symptoms were getting really intense. I was like, ah, I should probably do a colonic. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, this has been great. It's been so nice to sit down and talk to you today. I'd love for you to let everybody know where they can find you. And I'll link that down below. And then just if you have any closing words too, for anybody watching, who's maybe thinking about doing a juice cleanse or thinking about going raw, like anything you've learned or comes to mind that you want to share with them. And if not, that's okay too. Yeah. Uh, I'm on YouTube at raw synergy TV. And I'm on Instagram as raw synergy. I don't, I haven't been posting there. I I, kind of like you taking that long break. I took a big break from most social media. Like YouTube is my, my main thing, but I might get back to Instagram. So you can follow me on Instagram as well. And as far as final words, I just would recommend really people Tuning into their bodies, listening, really listening to the thoughts that are running through your head on a daily basis. Try and catch those loops. We all, we're all thinking the same thoughts over and over every single day. Start listening to those and listen to what is going on in the background that you are not paying attention to. That like once you start paying attention to that, everything opens up and changes and <clears throat> you can really get so much insight about yourself and definitely try raw experiment with, with a raw diet, seeing how you feel, try a juice cleanse for a week or two, because you're, you'll just find that you feel so much better for the most part. I think most people will feel absolutely amazing when they get on a juice cleanse or go raw. And then the other thing is really the supplementation is so important. Like there's so many people who say you don't need supplements on raw. And I would say there's really some key nutrients that you need. And that would be like the iodine, vitamin T, vitamin D and B12. Those are really important. Um, And like daily green boost, barley grass juice powder is like my favorite amazing supplement that I literally go through like a bottle every week. It's, it's so, so packed with nutrients. And that's really important because our soils are not what they used to be. Food is not made the same way. And so I think it's really important to pay attention to all of those things. Yeah. And I just feel so much better eating like the raw living foods, hundred percent raw. And then taking the supplements, like I feel incredible, so yeah. much better like that than having like the animal products. And I did yes. test around like a few years, a couple years in raw, I did test and have some animal products. And it's just like, I don't feel nearly as good. So I feel, I would rather just take some supplements. Like I feel amazing than like eat the animal products, have like that different energy. Cause it's all energy, right? I don't like that type totally. of energy. And the, it's just, yeah, I don't know the, the mucus and the, I have the sinuses get going. It's just, it's not for mm-hmm. me, but if it's for other people, I respect that. I'm not like, you know, I don't hate on people for it. I think everybody has to do what's right for them, but it's not for me. Absolutely. I want to ask you too. I forgot to ask. I think, what do you eat in a typical day? Right now I am doing the celery juice in the morning. I do another big thing of apple juice uh, right after that fresh pressed apple juice. And then I kind of do like small meals of fruit throughout the day. I find that I do so much better with like smaller meals throughout the day. I can Mm -hmm. get so much more in as far as like meeting my caloric needs. And then at night, it's usually like a really big salad or some type of, um, noodle, like zucchini, cucumber noodles, Mm. and uh, like lettuce wraps and things like that. So, and then also like a lot more fruit at night too. It's just like fruit all day long, including at night. 
Yeah. Amazing. And I feel so good eating that way. That's so good. Does your husband eat that way too? If you don't want to answer that, that's okay too. Oh no, it's totally fine. Yeah. He, yeah. he eats a vegan diet. So he's yeah. on a, he's on a vegan diet. He eats different than I do, you know, cook, cooked food, but it still works. You know, we make it yeah. work. It's all yeah, good. For sure. That's yeah. amazing. Well, thanks again, yeah. Alicia. I think you're awesome. I'll link everything down below for sure. And to the viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it added some value to your day. If it did, give it a big thumbs up right now and subscribe if you don't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.